Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I made these really cute rustic shutters. Now, um, about a couple days ago, I posted a vlog and I kind of decorated this space, but I wasn't 100% happy with it. And one of my subscribers commented saying that shutters would look really good on either side. So I did some research, got some inspiration, and I figured, you know what? I could totally make this without having to buy anything. And I went outside and we had some scrap pieces from when we did our privacy fence. So that's what these are, are the, the small panels from a privacy fence. And I went and cut them all down to be the same length. Now every piece of wood is going to be different and your style is going to be different. You just want to make sure that all the boards are the same length. Now my boards are very bent, as you can tell. They have just been laying out behind the shed, so they're a little warped and bent. But you know what? I figured it would just add to the rustic look. So I did the best I could at measuring it and cutting them as even as possible. So I used three of the panels, um, and then I used a, I think it's a one by two. A one by two? I, I believe it is. I'll leave it on the screen and I'll also put it in the description box. And that's the part that I put at the top and bottom. Um, and at the angle. And I will talk about that in just a moment. But right here I'm just going to go ahead and cut all my wood and just do the best I can at keeping it as even as possible. And now one more thing I wanted to talk about is this is my like third time using a skill saw. This is something I was terrified to do for so, so long. And I finally just one day was just tired of having to wait until um, my husband got home to cut stuff for me. And I was like, you know what? I can do it. I just have to put my mind to it, be extra careful. And I just go very slow. I take my time. I'm not in a rush. And anybody can do this. Um, mine does have a guard on it, which it makes me feel a little bit safer. Um, but they're still very dangerous, so just be careful if you decide to use one and have someone teach you. I had my husband teach me like a thousand times before I finally gave it a shot. And don't ever be ashamed of that. Like, we all have fears and it's totally okay. Um, and if you don't want to cut wood or you don't have a saw and whenever everything passes with the virus and stuff, you can actually have Lowe's cut stuff for you. They will do it completely free. All you have to do is hand them a piece of paper with the measurements that you want, and they will gladly cut it, and it's very quick and easy. Okay, so after laying out the boards and figuring out where I wanted them, I just went in with a screw and screwed them directly into the fence panels. It was very simple. Um, I do need a screw gun, so if you guys have any suggestions for one that I can order online, I would appreciate it if you'd leave it in the comments below. The reason why I haven't had one or haven't gotten one yet is because I usually just use my husband's. So there's really no point in me buying one because before I used a saw, I always just waited till he got home to do projects. Um, but now that I'm comfortable using one, I want one so I don't have to use a screwdriver. <laughs> um, but there's nothing wrong with a little bit of elbow grease, just so you guys know. Um, but now I'm going in with some stain and just adding in some dark tones. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment. Just bear with me. I promise it looks good at the very end. So if you're new to my channel, I actually built a faux fireplace with my husband about a month ago. Um, I, guess, I think it's actually been a little bit over a month. Um, I'll link that video below, but this is actually the same technique I used whenever I painted that fireplace. I went in with dark brown tones and then I added in the white on top and it just naturally gave a rustic look. Um, so you don't have to use stain. If you don't have stain, you can use brown dark paint or even black paint would work. The whole point is just to give some dark tones in the background. That way when you add the white, the dark kind of shows through just a little bit. So whenever I start adding on the white paint, you'll see what I'm talking about. And if you've seen the clip at the very beginning, um, you can see how it turns out and you, you can definitely see the dark tones coming through. So that is why I'm doing this. 
So right here, I'm going to just pour some of this chalk paint that I bought from Walmart. This is the Waverly um, chalk paint. It's very cheap and affordable. And you'll notice that I added a few other colors because I thought I was going to use them and I never ended up even using those tones because the dark stain came through so nice that I didn't even have to add those. Um, so I literally only used the dark stain and the white paint to do this. Like I said, you don't have to use stain. You could use dark brown paint and make it a lot cheaper. I just had the stain on hand and that's what I decided to use. So right here you can see I'm just going in like very rough brush strokes back and forth and I'm actually using the exact same paintbrush I used to put the stain on. Um, I just mixed it. It didn't really matter because I knew I wanted some of those tones to show through anyway. And this is all personal preference. You can add a ton of white. You can add a little bit. You can add any color you want. This is literally personal preference. I wanted a very rustic look and that's what I went for. So just keep that in mind. Everybody's style is different. You don't have to, um, you know, do this style. You could paint it a solid color if you want. It would still look just as beautiful. Now, you're probably also noticing that there's not the board going at an angle across. And originally, I wasn't going to do that because I'm not good at cutting angles. Um, so after I hung it up on the wall, I just felt like it was missing something. So I gave it a shot, and the angles were not perfect. But at the very end, you'll notice that there are angles going across the boards just to add to that barn-style look. Um, it's not necessary because it looks just as good here. If you don't want to cut the angles, you don't have to. Alright you guys, so I have been trying to play with this wall and I just don't like anything. So I made these homemade shutters and I think they turned out really good. Y'all tell me what you think. <laughs> um, they're not like completely even but you know it just kind of adds to the rustic look. So I'm going to actually hang these on either side of this window and see how it looks. Alright, so the shutters are done. I think they look really good. Um, they're very rustic and just, you know, not perfect, but that's the whole point. Um, you can see on this side right here, this wood ended up being a little bit short. Um, it's totally fine. I think it just adds to it. I don't even think you would notice unless I, like, pointed it out. Um, but I think it looks really cool in here. I love this look better than having, like, all the collage stuff. It was just starting to get, like, a little too cluttered on the wall. And, um you know, just thrown together, and I just, I didn't love the way it looked at the beginning, so I absolutely love these. I'll have these for a long time, and I can move them around, and I'm going to take them down and show you guys how I hung them up, um, just to make it real easy, and the little hardware is from Dollar Tree. Okay, so this is how I got mine to hang up. I just put an eye hook on this side, one on this side, and then just use this wire, um, and this is from, this little kit was from Dollar Tree. It came with a lot so I could use it for multiple pictures and it worked out perfect. So I just quickly wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Um, and if you want, you can come follow me over on my Instagram and my Pinterest. My Instagram is budgetfam2 and my Pinterest is just budgetfam. Just make sure you put the capital B for Pinterest. I really appreciate you guys so, so much. And if you want to see more videos of mine, please check out these two videos I will link right here. Thank you again and I will see you in my next video. Bye y'all.